Good morning, YouTubers. T Square with T Square Talk. So, got an exciting video today. Uh, I got to talk about silver. Got to talk about silver. Got to talk about the dip because what's going on, I think, is blinding people. I think people aren't looking at the true stories. I think people are getting focused in on, uh, I'll just say, nonsense, really. And I, I see a lot of comments that kind of come across sometimes as nonsense. Uh, I don't know if people just don't really understand what's going on. Um, and it ain't just in the comments. I even have people call me today, well, yesterday, and and ask me, you know, hey, what's going on, dude? You know, here I was thinking silver was going to go up or something, and it's coming down. And I, I get such a kick out of that. I really do, because people just don't really see the full picture of what's going on. And so I think it's important that we talk about why silver's coming down today, what's going on with silver, what's going on with precious metals, what's going on with everything, really, um, in this economy that's supposedly doing great, or at least that's what they want us to think, that everything is going great, and because everything's going great, well, naturally, gold and silver is going to go down when things are great, because like someone left me a comment the other day, if inflation is so bad, why is silver and gold coming down? And I think it's an important thing to think about, but I think that there's a lot of manipulation going on right now. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that is going on, and then you guys can make your own judgment at the end of the video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please take a quick minute, hit that thumbs up button. It helps me more than you know you hit that thumbs up button. I can't thank you enough. We are trying to grow the channel. At Sometimes I get a little frustrated uh, because a lot of work goes into making these videos, and Sometimes I just feel like, man, the channel just seems like it's growing so slow now. Uh, so help me out with that, and um, we're going to keep pushing forward. And today, like I said, it's a great, a great, great topic. And if you have any questions about this or something else, leave me a comment, because your comments do fuel my future videos. So, big question. Why is silver going down, gold going down? Now, here's the thing. Let's take an honest look at what's really happening, though. Gold. Not really going down that much. What is the all-time high for gold? I think it was $2,450. Now we're sitting at $2,340. That's a very small percentage for it to be down. You're talking down maybe 100 bucks, maybe 4% down when essentially we're up, what, 25% so far for the year? It's a normal little pullback. Uh, I don't phase, it doesn't phase me at all. And a lot of that, you know, some people might say, well, that's because it's gold. It doesn't really have big moves. And I'll be the first one to tell you, yeah, when it's going up, it doesn't skyrocket overnight. Granted, I'm not complaining about 20, 25%. That's a pretty good return on your money for so far this year. However, I don't even think we've begun to see how much we're going to go up this year. A lot of people are all reevaluating their end of the year guesses. I'll be honest, my end of the year guess was 2,500. I think we're going to easily see 2500 by the end of this year. Why? Because the Fed meeting is coming. And stuff is going to have to change. In order for change to happen, there's not many things the Fed can do except for lower interest rates. Now, the question is, are they going to lower interest rates? Are they going to raise interest rates? Or are they just going to keep them the same? Well, we have a meeting in two weeks on that. And I'm going to get to that meeting here in just a minute. But before I get to talking a little bit about how that meeting could play out, let's jump over to silver real quick because I want to keep us both on par, both metals on par with each other. Silver taking a pretty good hit. We've seen it go as far as 3250. Uh, now it's down to 2950, down three bucks, three bucks out of 30, a 10% hit essentially. Uh, is it the end of the world? No, because there again, silver for the year was up 27% at 32.50. 27%. That means 27 cents on every dollar you just profited. So if you didn't have a lot of money, you put a couple hundred bucks in, you just made $27 for every hundred dollars you put in. So I think the gains have been phenomenal for silver. And here's the thing. I mean, there's still a lot of room. Anybody that thinks, oh, the gains have already came, I've missed it. I don't personally believe that. Now, everything I say on here is just my opinion. It's not financial advice. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am. I think we're going to continue to see silver go up. In fact, I think when people start panicking, we could drastically see silver go up. And a lot of people don't understand 
when they say, oh, you should convert now your silver to gold while it still has a good amount. Here's the thing. You look at the gold to silver ratio, we're still up there. We're still up there. What are we at? I think last I looked, I think it was like 76. You know, some people are like, yeah, but it was down to 74. Okay. So it jumped up a couple. Maybe we might even go back up to 80 to one. But here's the thing. The next push, how quick can that push drop it? Well, you know, when people start flooding money in to silver and gold, it's going to cause a panic. And anytime people see big returns, it's going to cause more people to get in. But right now, a lot of people are seeing it come down and they're wait, they're thinking, oh, I'm just going to wait when it comes all the way back down and then I'll buy it. But nobody knows what all the way back down is. That's the key. All the way back down. Where is the bottom? If any of us knew where the bottom was, including myself, well, I wouldn't be buying. You guys saw I just picked up a couple of nice package openings the last couple of days um, thinking I was buying a dip. And then it dipped a little more, but it doesn't really matter because why is it actually dipping? So who's selling? In order for the price of something to dip, someone has to be selling. And, you know, I know some people be like, oh, that ain't how silver works. You know, it, it kind of is. It kind of is because someone is selling. But what are they selling? They're not selling physical silver. They're selling paper contracts that represent silver. And to a certain point, they can do that as much as they want. But the truth of the matter is, the key is they don't represent silver. They're short selling silver because they know it's going to go down. Now, what is for people that don't know what short selling is, I had someone ask me that the other day. He's like, you know, I don't want to sound off, but I'm curious. What does it mean when you sell something short? Well, so when you sell something short, I'll give you a small example. Well, we can use a big example. Let's hypothetically say this represented 5,000 ounces of silver. And you have it, and I borrow it from you. I'd like to borrow 5,000 ounces of silver from you. I now have the 5,000 ounces. I promise to pay you back 5,000 ounces of silver. Not the money, the silver. The 5,000 ounces of silver. I have to buy it back. So I'm borrowing it from you. I take it, I sell it onto the market. And what did I just do? I pushed the price down because I'm flooding the market with more silver than it should be there. Now, as that happens, that drives the price lower. What the short sellers are hoping is that if they can borrow enough silver, sell it on the market, they drive the price down, and then they can buy it back at the lower price and give it to them. The problem comes up if the price jumps while they owe, now they owe them still, which means then they have to buy them at the higher prices and essentially give it back to the person. So a great example of this would be, let's say now you borrow, I borrow from you 5,000 ounces of silver at $32, and I push it on the market, and I drive the price down to $32. Well, I can either buy that, the amounts is back at $31, whatever the price is. I just say it was 32, now it's 31. I can either buy it back at 31 and make $5,000, or I can get greedy and hope if I keep doing that, that I can keep pushing the price of silver lower and lower and lower. Those are called short contracts. As more people do that, it creates a vacuum where it continues to go lower and lower. The problem, though, that can come up, it's great if the price keeps going down for the people that sold it short because they sold it at the top and now they can buy it back here and give it back to the person. So it's great. They made money. They made basically 5,000 times. If it goes down a dollar, that's $5,000. If it goes down $2, that's $10,000 and so on and so on. The problem that arises is if they push it down too low, some big entity, in this case, we'll say India for a minute, comes in and they say, dude, silver's under $30. Put in another, I don't know, billion ounces. We'll, we'll buy them. Who cares? 100 million ounces, whatever. If silver's cheap, we can buy them. What do you think that's going to do? That's going to push the price higher. Now, in that pushing that price higher, the problem that comes up is the person that borrowed, in my case, I borrowed 5,000 ounces from you. I have to buy them at whatever price the silver price is. 
So now, if the price went all the way down, they beat the price down to, we're going to say $28 from $32. Well, that's a $4. I'm sitting pretty because $5,000 times a $4 drop, essentially, that's $20K. So I made $20K. And when I say 5,000 ounces, that's one contract. There are entities that are holding thousands of contracts. So they're not playing on a scale of $20,000 like I'm telling you this one 5,000 contract. So needless to say, now all of a sudden the entity, we'll say in this case India, buys a ton of silver and boom, like that, they just push the price all the way back up, not only to 32, but they're gonna push it to 34 this time. Why? Because they're buying it all. And needless to say, the COMEX runs lower and lower. And essentially, the entities like myself that borrowed that 5,000 contract to sell it short have to buy that 5,000 ounce contract, 5,000 ounces, at $34 which in essence will drive the price even higher. Now, a lot of these short selling contracts, they have a time period where they have to return them. So in most cases, the financial quarter ends on the uh, 90 day, uh, 180 days, which is coming up pretty soon. At the end of this month is 180 days. That's the end of the second financial quarter. Now, that could end up really erupting. Can they beat it down, continue to beat it down? They can, possibly. But right now, a lot of people are looking at some of the big numbers that are coming out at the end of this week and next week with uh, jobs, with inflation, with uh, the most important one is going to be the Fed meeting coming up. And what's going to happen? Are they this time going to raise interest rates? Are they going to lower interest rates? Or are they going to stay the same? Uh, we're seeing this more and more. Um, that people are questioning what's going to happen. When the Fed talks, that's why everybody listens. But here's the thing. We've talked about this time and time again. The Fed is stuck in a hard spot right now because they can only do one of two things. They can either fight inflation, which means they'd have to lower interest rates. Ah, it, I'm sorry. They'd have to raise interest rates. I'm, I apologize. Raise interest rates will cause inflation to go down because higher interest rates will make it to where people won't want to borrow money. They're scared to borrow money. But they also want to help the current administration. They have essentially a lot of pressure behind them that, you know, in order for this administration to remain in position, we need lower interest rates. Why? So the stock market will boom, so people will be happy their investments are going up, and so on and so on. So what can they do? They really can't help them both. So they're under pressure both ways. Now, their main concern as the Fed should be fighting inflation, protecting the dollar. When people lose faith in the dollar, there's no going back. But the current administration, they want to remain in power. So quite frankly, they don't really care about anything else. If they've got to give away some free school loan money, they're going to do that. If they've got to give away some free, uh, I don't know, whatever, they're going to do that. They want to remain in power and they're not worried about long-term problems, which would be the collapse of the dollar or the end of the world reserve currency being the U.S. dollar. They're concerned about what's now, the problem now. And a lot of people do look at that. People don't look at long-term problems. They're worrying about the problems of today. So the problem with that is what are they going to do? Well, right now that puts them in a hard spot. And that's why we're seeing a great pullback on silver and gold, but not as much on gold. Gold is stable. Gold is a stable metal. It's not a uh, as much industrial and I don't want to say gambling because, but silver does have big moves. That's why it was up a whole lot higher. Someone asked me the other day, do you wish you had bought more gold? Not now, I don't. I said because gold was only up 24%, whereas silver was up 27%, and silver was starting to make a big run on it until we had this big pullback. But at the end of the day, that's why I'm picking up, because this is a buying opportunity. A lot of people don't get it. They're scared. They're scared that they might lose a couple of dollars in the short run, and so it's making them not buy precious metals right now. But the truth of the matter is, well, silver's at an 11-year high almost. If you could take out the last two weeks, we'd have an 11-year high. I think it's going to go a whole lot higher. 
and therefore I want to keep picking up. Now, do I try to pick up dips? Of course I do. If I can pick up and save a dollar an ounce times, this is a 20 ounce tube, that's 20 bucks. What is 20 bucks make a difference in the long run? It's probably not gonna make that difference in the long run. When silver's up to $100, am I gonna care that I paid $30 or $32 or whatever the case may be? That extra dollar is not gonna make a big difference. The problem comes up with today is what I'm worried about too. I mean, if I can save $20 today and get the same amount of silver today from yesterday, well, that's a good deal. 20 bucks makes the difference of if I get to go out to eat or not, um, or if I'm going to be eating peanut butter and jelly at home because I put my stacking as a higher priority. And my stacking is a very high priority in my life. I, I have people tease me. They're like, really, you don't want to go out to eat because you don't want to spend any money? I mean, first of all, this is money, what you see in front of you. And paper currency is just that. It's currency. You know, I use it when I go out to eat. I use it when I go and buy things. But the truth of the matter is, this is real wealth right here. And I know some people are going to say, oh, that's not really that much. And maybe it's not what you see in front of you. But the truth of the matter is, it is and it has the potential to be when you look at historical values, not manipulated values, with all the money that's flowing into Bitcoin, all the money that's flowing into real estate, all the money that's flowing into all these different treasury bonds and CDs and overpriced stocks and so on and so on. Eventually, that money is going to filter somewhere else and it's going to filter to safe haven assets. And when that happens, if you've already got yours, you're going to have it made. So don't panic when you see the dip. Uh, it's If you're re writing them comments because you're really seriously scared, don't panic. I don't think you have anything to worry about. I think we will be right back at $22 in no time at all, probably even by the end of this month, personally. However, it could take a little while. At the end of the day, though, if I buy 20 ounces of silver, I got 20 ounces of silver. It's an insurance policy. As a whole, most of you guys that have been stacking for a while cannot possibly be up at 29, it cannot possibly be down in money at 29.50. You've made money. And I got one friend that he keeps buying and he says, I can't lose now. I started buying at 16. How can I lose? I said, no, you can't, but I want you to be aware that we could see a pullback. He goes, I don't care. I really don't care. I got mine. I'm going to be okay no matter what, right? I said, in my opinion, yes. So with that being said, you're probably going to be okay too, but this is not financial advice, nor should it be considered as such. With any kind of investment, quite frankly, comes with the possibility of risk and loss. So you need to be aware of that, but I'm not worried at all. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I got to say, I love this camera that I'm using now because it doesn't stop at 13 minutes, um, but it does make the videos a little longer. But please hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment. If you have a question about something, ask the question. I love to answer questions and I try to reply back to all the comments. And if you are a member of the channel, I thank you so much for joining. It's only $1.99 a month. And so I am extremely thankful for that, that you are a member. And for anybody that is watching, hitting that thumbs up, subscribing, and leaving comments, I'm thankful for that too. So thank you all, and I hope you all have a great day. Watch them prices. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.